Six-time All-Pro, Shady McCoy. Most rushing yards in Eagle franchise history. He'll be on Speak later today. So you made a really good point before you came on. And by the way, you look tight today. This is, he looks good. That is a, I don't. It's my Super Bowl outfit, you know? I don't know great where, game, great outfit. I don't know where you shop, but it's way better than I'm over there at Dillard's, and you're over there looking a game. Dillard got some nice stuff, man. <laughs> come on, come on. All right, let's start with this. You said during the break about turning the sound down in the first half. If you turn the sound down, you don't know the score. You would think that the Niners were up by two touchdowns. Soon you turn the game on. From the, soon as the Super Bowl started, you can see the difference of the talent level. You can see the difference of of of. The players on the Niners compared to the players of the Chiefs. Bosa, Warner, McCaffrey. Right, you see the speed, the explosion. The line of scrimmage, they dominated on both sides of the ball early in the game. The first drive before McCaffrey fumbled, they controlled the line of scrimmage. You could see the difference. But I kept saying, yo, if they keep playing around with these Chiefs, with Andy Reid, with Patrick Mahomes, eventually they're going to lose this game. That's what happened. There's no way you can have sacks. There's no way you can have turnovers, fumbles, picks, and don't get no points out of it. And win the game. He made a great, J-Mac made a great point, and I thought it was significant. When they entered, Mahomes makes no playoff mistakes, and he made a rare yeah. mistake yeah. on the pick, and they couldn't get points. And it was like, okay, you can't do that. Yeah. If Mahomes makes a mistake, you got to get points. Now, let me ask you this. You lying about that. Kansas City's ability on both sides to go in at halftime, you only, now it's a longer halftime. Yeah, it is. So this is about, a, what is it, about 20, 25-minute halftime? Yeah, it's a long one. It's long. Um, the Chiefs always make such great pivots at half. Andy Reid is the best adjuster in sports, right? And then Spags has been playing or coaching amazing, right? And you look at the second half. Okay, the first half, you've seen pressures, right? You, you've seen Bosa. You've seen Chase Young. You see the difference. You get to that second half. You see the adjustments, right? I didn't see that many pressures in the second half. You see so many different looks at a different tight end. You see chip blocks. You've seen it all. And even the pick that Mahomes threw, right, which he, he rarely makes a mistake in the playoffs, he had Kelsey open, and he thought he was going to keep going, and Kelsey kind of right. stopped, that's right? right? And I said, if they, don't make a, if they don't capitalize on that, this game is over with. And then you give, you give Patrick Mahomes the ball back with Andy Reid. With a minute 50. With a minute 50. And- that's too much time. And it kept going slowly and slowly and slowly. You know what's interesting? I, we were talking about this during the break. Is um, I would be a terrible football coach because if I had plays that work, I'd want to use them. So mm. in, the, in the first half, Kansas City could not create momentum. Yep. And Andy just waited. Be patient. And then he goes to overtime in the fourth, and they're using plays which they could have easily needed in the first half. And they didn't use them. There's something about their confidence and ability to hang around. First of all, they've been there before. You talk about the, the halftime show. If you haven't been in the Super Bowl, you don't understand how long that is. Staying warm, staying hot, staying focused. Then you get to the second half, and you talk about these plays late in the game. This is why I always argue about, from, from my opinion, right, my experience, this is why Andy Reid to me is the best coach in football, best coach we've ever seen because the mental part. Like, you take a team that struggled all year, you take a team that is not as talented as the team you're playing, right? right. The number one seed on, on the NFC side. You get to these moments where you got to have it. Third and shorts, fourth downs, and he delivers. This is second Super Bowl in a row. We've seen Patrick Mahomes score a touchdown late in the game, and it's, and it's unguarded. That's not talent. <laughs> That's not no strong arm. Sky That's Moore last Andy Reid. Yeah. You see Kadarius Tony last year. You see Sky Moore this, uh, last year. Then this year you see um, Hartman. McCole Hartman. Same type of play. Wide open. Wide open. And then even even before, on that same drive, it was I think third and short. Mahomes ran for a 22 yard gain. That was so smart. Um, read option. You send Kelsey on the flat route. If, if it's third and short, you see Kelsey runs on the flat route. Everybody in the stadium's gonna go get him. And Patrick Mahomes just scrambles and keeps scrambling. Then, even on that same drop, the last one, because it was like four or five yeah. amazing coaching yeah. plays that they made. It was a screen to Kelsey, right? It was like two misdirections, and then Kelsey popped in the middle for a little screen. That got the first down and the goal line to end the game. I can go on and for hours about how great Andy Reid is as a coach and Patrick Mahomes. And I kept telling everybody all week on speak on everywhere. Yeah, I know that Niners have a better team. Yeah, I know the Niners have more talent. You can never bet against Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid the same way you could never bet back in the day against Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. Let me ask you, Kelsey bumps Andy Reid. I tend to defend emotional players. I've yeah. said this about Draymond Green. I don't love the punch. He made the league right. based on his intensity. Uh, Rodman, 
He couldn't shoot. He made it because of his intensity. Mm -hmm. So I can't ask these guys to be perfect human beings. Brady made it on his poise, right? Yeah. It's a whole different ballgame. So that didn't, the bump didn't bother me. No. Did it bother you? No, at all. See, and I guess on TV, it looks a certain way, right? If you don't know Andy Reid and you don't know Travis Kelsey, this is the type of – Andy likes these type of players. I've been there. I've chest bumped Andy Reid. Now, he's older now, so he's stumbling here. <laughs> but he never does. But I'll give you this thing. Let me let the world know this. Andy Reid is no chump. Oh, ain't, no, I'm being serious. Andy Reid ain't going to let – I don't care who the poodle players – ain't going to bully Andy Reid. So they're having fun here. They're excitement, Right? He, he's passionate about this game, Travis Kelsey. He's saying, big guy, let's go. I've seen Deshaun Jackson run up on, on Andy Reid, bump him. Let's go, baby. He likes that. And another thing about Andy Reid is funny. There's times in the game, I don't care what the game is, and he can come up to you and whisper. I mean, and he got 50 yards. That's all you got? Like, he knows how to get it out of you. So this right, when I've seen this, I love it because I know Andy Reid. I know Travis Kelsey. They're having a ball. They're having fun. He's just saying, let's go, big guy. It was nothing disrespectful about that. And Andy Reid won't let you even get that far with him. Now, do you think there are any Niners that are looking at Mahomes and thinking, boy, it's Brock Purdy. I don't know if it's Brock Purdy. How do you think the Niner players losing view Purdy in the offense today? I'm going to be honest, man. When I watched this offensive game plan, I thought it could have ran the ball a little bit more, right? Um, I thought Brock played solid to win this game. Well, he played solid. I, I think one thing I did notice is that as smart as Kyle Shanahan is as an offensive coordinator, right, dicing the plays up, at some point in time, you need players to go out there and go get it. And I look, it looked like to me, from the matchups of the, the cornerbacks for the Chiefs against the wide receivers for the Niners, I only seen one true wide receiver route runner, and that was Brandon Ayuk. Yeah, he's good. Everybody else looked like they was covered, right? And Spags with some, with some heat here and there. But overall, they needed some route runners. They couldn't get open. I, D -Bow, I love Debo as a phenomenal football player. But the times when he had some one-on-ones with McDuffie, he was in his pocket. I, I, I think you, again, hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah. Jet sweeps for Debo. Mm -hmm. um, I thought going into the game that Debo and McCaffrey and Kittle would be huge because right. I thought the Chiefs' corners would sort of eliminate Ayuk, eliminate Jennings, although yeah. they didn't. I didn't think it would be a big day for the Niners' Receivers, mm, perimeter players. Right, right, right. But I thought they'd figure out ways. McCaffrey was going to get yeah. 20 touches. But what, what happens when, that, when all that gadget stuff don't work? This, the jet sweeps, the, the misdirections, the, 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 you know, the, 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 uh, the little special magic plays you, you, you scored yeah. on. What happens when all that, okay, now that's done with? Because you talked about earlier how my, Andy Reid saved his special plays. So when you let your special ace out the hole, then what? You got to go out there and play football. We, I mean, so, it's only so much misdirection and, and disguise you can do. There's got to be a point where, look, my best player – on your best player, and we got to win because the Chiefs got late in the game. I need my special guys on defense to make plays. They did that. Check. On offense, I need my best players to make plays. Okay, Travis Kelsey, we need you. Third, third and short. We need the first down. Check. Mahomes, you the best. You the GOAT. That's what they say. Win the game. My best player on a best player. What do he do? Check. He won a Super Bowl. But Debo didn't get it, and Kittle didn't get That's it. That's what I'm saying. Oh, so J-Mac got frustrated with me, but if on. you go into a game – and you're playing Mahomes, you have to make sure that Debo and Kittle, the tight end and the gadget player, they got to have big days. Got to. You, you got, because one of the advantages San Francisco had was we have much better skill players. A lot better. A lot better. And yet three of them had zero impact. And the funny thing is, like, uh, our big games, right? I remember our Super Bowl run with the Chiefs, even before the Chiefs with, with the Eagles. And his main message is I want everybody to, to let their personality show, play your game. He says, but I need my best players to outdo their best players. And if that happens, you win the game. And if you look at look, watch the game last yesterday, that's what happened. You know, we were talking about Mahomes. Uh it's I, that boy's I said, so good. Oof. Oh my God. You know, it, it's <laughs> it's crazy. One of the things about Patrick is he, he, I said he's like an AI computer. The first two or three quarters, you just feed stuff into his information, brain. and you're like, "That doesn't work." Oh, he missed that badly. Uh, he's off his stuff. And then in the fourth quarter, yeah. like AI, he stores it, brings the data out, and everything clicks. I, I don't think, I don't think we understand how cognitively quick he is. When C.J. Stroud came into the league this year, the first thing we said is, "Boy, he gets the he sees oh, fast." The, yeah. And then we other we see other guys you and I have been critical of. We're like. Zach Wilson, they don't see the field. Mm -mm. I mean, what do you make of Mahomes in these drives late? It's, uh, playing with, with Brady in 2020, right, 
and then playing with Mahomes in 2019, they are different players. They are different players, different skill sets. But that's one thing that they get together is that when the game gets tough, they get tougher, right? When they got to be epic for a moment, they are. You talked about, like, downloading the information right, over the game, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. Everything I done processed this whole through. now I'm about to do it. Mahomes seems so calm. Do you see him? Like, no matter what the moment is, you got to have it. He's calm. He's, like, loose. And he's confident. I want the ball. Right? That's one thing I remember playing with him is no matter what the moment was, he wanted the ball. If we're going to win, we're going to win with me. If we're going to lose, we're going to lose with me. That's the way he plays. You got to scramble. Even I forget what Downer was, but they were coming back. And remember, Do you know last year? Think about this. That scramble was like. Last year, what was the most memorable play in the game? It the was scramble. Mahomes with a bad leg scrambling. My takeaway yesterday wasn't the Hardman touchdown. It was three times in the game, Mahomes scrambling. Any way you got to have it. First half, not going to do it. Yep. You notice that? Like, yeah. he just saves it. He, he kind of watches the defense, watches your tendencies, sees if you're a little over-aggressive, stores it, and then come back and burn you with it. Yeah, because even, like, a, that's a great point. If you really watch him, like, earlier in the game, he was kind of scrambling when he didn't need to, right? So if you watch the game as it progressed longer and longer, he starts staying in the pocket. Like you said, he wasn't running. The fourth quarter came, all that stuff he processed, when to run, when not to run, when to throw, when not to throw it. This is who he is. This is why I tell people, like, I guess we can't see it yet because he's still young. He's not even 30 yet, and he has three championships. But it's the same thing when Brady was taking over. We, we would say the same thing. Oh, look how poised he is. Fourth quarter. He got to have it. He does it. It's, it's, it's Mahomes' era. I'm not betting against him. That's why I want me some money this weekend. <laughs> Did you bet Kansas? Did I bet? Yeah, money line. Ting, ting, ching, ching. Yes. And then you bought the jacket. I'll bet in this jacket. But look. The whole playoffs, I made money on the Chiefs. Listen, you, you got to beat them, right? Until it's done, until, until I see it, I'm not betting against them because I've seen what great coaching does compared to not having great coaching. I've seen what having a great quarterback on your team compared to not having that. And you see the difference. If you're, um, man, it's, it's, do you, that's do, a great I mean, game. What do you think Kelsey does? Now he's got the billionaire girlfriend. He's had 10 surgeries. He did look shady. He looked old in the regular season. He did. He looked old. He 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 didn't look look older. He didn't play well this spring season. Okay. Do you think there's – I mean, do you think everybody can't – like Chris Jones, he may move just because of the cost. The money, yeah. Um, What do you make of where Travis Kelsey is? First of all – He could say goodbye. He got 100 large. I will say this. He's – let's give him some love to him. He's, He's doing great. On the field, but man, he's doing great off the field. That's for one. For two is he's falling in love with this thing, right? And 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 when I watch the Chiefs now, because I was worried, like, yo, my boy don't look the same. I don't know if he was injured. I didn't know what was going on. Is it older? I didn't. I, was, I didn't want to think he was older, but I didn't know. He just looked different. No, he, he was hobbling. Play, playoffs. He looked like the old Kelsey. So now I'm like, okay, if this Chiefs team could win with this really good defense with Spags could go to the offense and they could be up and down all year with a young, inconsistent wide receiver core who next year is going to be way better. Right, right. Okay? And you don't need your best player – I'm sorry. You don't need your best offensive weapon to be good into the playoffs. I'm going to take that check. I'm going to cash that in. You know why? Because that lets me know that, yo, we can manage the whole season. And we get to the playoffs, and our Kelsey is going to be Kelsey. So we don't need him to have a whole bunch of targets in the regular season. We don't need him to play every game. We know in the playoffs he's going to show up. And I'm going to take that. How about this? McCall Hardman, Jets were like, no thanks, MVS. I love, we don't want them. I love when Kansas City goes, we're not asking you to be a one. We're not even asking you to be a two. Can you make a big play in big games? Yep. You were there. You were there briefly. But take me into that whole Andy thing. Is Listen, I got my bedrock, yep. guys. I'm yep. not asking you. But when I call your number... Mm-hmm. Bro, you got to be ready to play. And, and that's why I always harp on how great of a coach Andy Reid is. You know, most teams, they need a number one receiver. Most teams need a guy that we could, like a Tyreek Hill. When they got rid of Tyreek Hill, now, being honest, I was worried. Because mm-hmm. I know what Andy Reid lo- loves to do. He loves explosive plays, right? But this is the real first time I've seen this team, like, really win-win without them explosive plays, right? Or the speedsters. We seen it earlier with McCole Hartman. That, that, uh, that, that uh, I think it's a... Um, um, I forget the Roddy ran, but it was like kind of corner, post, right? Mahomes threw it deep before the fumble, or after, the, after that play, the um, old boy fumbled it. Right. Pacheco. Yeah. 
But those are plays we see three or four times a game with Andy Reid. This year you haven't been seeing them type of plays, and they're still winning. So it lets me know that's the coaching part, that I can draft these young guys. I could take rejects from other teams that people don't want, and I can make them have great plays and great moments. That's coaching. Last year it was Sky Moore. And Juju. <laughs> right, you see what I'm saying? By the way, they bring in Juju, Come don't on. pay him anything, has a really productive year, and then the Patriots go give him a three-year deal. Right. Like, th- th- that's when That's you're- coaching. And, 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 and uh, Brett Veach, I got to give him credit. He was, he's the GM, right? They've hit on like seven defensive players. I tell everybody that. This dude is so locked into his freaking players and his scouting department. All Andy Reid's best players, Brett Veach goes out there and gets them. He told me a story about Patrick Mahomes. He said he went to his office. We got to go get this kid from Texas Tech. We got to get him. He's different. He's special. And with your coaching, he's going to be the best quarterback we've ever seen. And he's on the path to do it. Yeah, you have a GM that understands the brilliance of a coach and a coach who has so much respect. And for they the like GM. they like this too, though. That was, by the way, that was always uh, Sean Payton and mm. uh, Mickey Loomis yep, in New Orleans. Yep, yep. Is Sean told me one time he goes, "I never disagreed with a pick. Yep. I may get upset with a with a Christmas card we had at, at Christmas. I didn't like the Christmas card or some <laughs> pregame stuff. He goes, but when it came to personnel, yep. I told him this is what That's I trust. need." And he got it, and I think that's it. Andy's like, here's what I need. Can you find it? And and the scariest part about this team, knowing what you said about Brett Veach, how great of mine he has, right? Their, their head trainer, uh, Rick Brokholder, how smart he is. And then Andy Reid, this may be the weakest team we'll see with the Chiefs. That's what we said. Because they're going to get better. They're going to get better. J-Mac. They're going to get better. That More experience. Another thing real quick, like from the Niners to the, the Chiefs, as the game went on, like you see the experience. You see one team kind of like – Pacing and pressing a little bit. The other team is cool and calm. We need a third down stop. We got you. We need some. We need to convert. We got you. And you just, you just seen it come together. I says over. I'm gonna cash my money out right now. Yeah, San Francisco's performance was uneven. Great early, bad yeah. third, better late. Kansas City was just a slow build until the last three to four drives. They were exceptional. Yes, they were. It was classic Kansas City. We're gonna. I said it was like Ali when I was a kid growing up. Didn't always win the early rounds. Felt you out with Foreman, Frazier. This isn't right. Moved off. St- round eight, round nine, round ten. Sugar Ray Leonard, the end of the round, figured it out. Kansas City's game was just kind of a methodical, oh. systematic improvement. Find answers. Store data. Use that at the right. San Francisco was big early, then uneven oh. in the third. Better late. But frankly, some of their defensive players late look gassed. Tired. Tired. Right. You know what? That box now, now is just pretty good. It reminds me of uh, Bud Crawford, the champ now. That's how he is. He downloads all the information, and at the end, it takes over. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.